All right. Hello, everyone. This is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyshore. Thanks for joining St. Louis Chess Club's YouTube channel. For today, I have prepared some interesting studies that uh, I'm looking forward to going over with you guys. I hope you'll like them. Um, today's class is supposed to be in, called Insane in the End Games, um, and uh, we tried to come up with a different name. Um, so, <laughs> just to kind of have a different title, not always the same one. So, um, well, we have named it Breakdown Unexpected Studies. Um, if you guys were following my uh, Sellers Chess Club's Twitch channel on Sunday, I did start some domin I did show some domination uh, positions where the knight was dominating the bishop. So I kind of have that idea in mind. But then there are a couple of interesting studies. Uh, especially one of them is very awesome that I kept towards the end. So I really hope to see all of you guys watch until the end. Without further ado, let us get started. So the first position that I have here set up is a study by Perone. Uh, it's a proper name. Hi, <laughs> thanks for joining. Um, so th in this position, it is white to move and you're trying to figure out a way for white to win, obviously, uh, what you guys may already know that uh, in, uh, well, knight endgames are supposedly very similar to king and pawn endgames. So if the knight endgame is, sorry, if the king and pawn endgame would be winning, then probably the knight endgame should be winning as well. But in a lot of situations, it is very difficult, especially if the opponent's king is close to, to, to the pawns or in front of the pawns, then there's usually the opportunity to sacrifice the knight for the pawn or pawns, and then, you know, it should be a draw. But in this case, we have pawns really far away one on each edge of the board, so it may not be so easy uh, to stop those pawns. Um, and obviously, it will not be easy because that's the point we're trying to... We're trying to find the win in this position, and um, I wonder if any of you has an idea of what should happen here with white. And I have the similar uh, similar position by the same author with the knight in b8, so it's going to be a little bit different. But basically what you have to try to do is um, finding a way to dominate black's knight, because obviously black's knight is going to try to stop uh, the h-pawn. The a-pawn is going to be captured by black's king, clearly. There is no simple way to, to defend it, and even if you do manage to defend it with knight c7 after chasing black's knight away from e6, there still will be king b6, and um, you probably won't be able to hold on to that pawn. So that pawn is going to fall, but the question is, will you be able to win with white with the h pawn? And the answer is yes. Um, and actually, it does matter what white plays in this position. You cannot attack this knight anyhow. There's just one way that wins it. The two natural moves that come to mind are king b7 and king to d7. Both of these moves are possible. You just need to figure out which one is actually the one that will uh, will help you win. And the correct move is king to e7. What happens after king d7? Uh, probably black is going to play a move like knight g5. And then obviously you have to try to defend your pawn. As actually that knight is hanging too, so you have to play knight c7. And now they will try to go for the pawn. You have to push. And then, as I was mentioning to you previously, king to b6. This way, the king keeps both the pawn and the knight attacked. And there isn't so much uh, that you can do. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Joining. Yes, yes. There are... Um, there are lots of uh, there are lots of beautiful um, studies out there, and domination is uh, is certainly a beautiful theme. I think so. I did I did choose uh, a bunch uh, of domination studies for today's um, for today's video. So here the problem is that like if you try to go for example king here and then supposedly going there to play a7 obviously we won't let that happen your knight is stuck to protect the pawn and then you don't have sufficient time to come the other way around to chase the king uh, because obviously he will play king b6 so there's no way for white to continue progressing this position but what's the difference now with king e7 instead well with king e7 you're attacking the knight and now they kind of have two uh two moves that that make more sense we'll we'll try other moves as well but 
knight d4 and uh, knight f4 are the ones that seem to make the most sense for black. Knight g5 is an option as well, but knight g5 seems to allow h4 to be played. And black is certainly trying to keep white from pushing that pawn forward too much. So with either one of these moves, uh, knight d4 or knight f4, that h pawn is stopped because their check pawn uh, ideas therefore stopping white from pushing it. So we'll first start with knight f4. Um, controlling the h3 square, and also, once again, there's knight g6 if you push, and let's not forget, this knight is hanging, so uh, white does need to play king c7, and um, the point is that now, if uh, if black plays king b6, then we will have knight e6 trying to trade the knight, and then no matter how you, you do things, now this knight is going to be placed in c5, defending the pawn from behind it, which is a very typical theme in um, knight end games, or you know, knight and pawn versus king type of ideas. He has to stay there. He cannot move anywhere, and then you should be able to win by supporting the h pawn with your king. Um, so, for example, if you just pretend you're just sitting and waiting, we'll play king f6, and then you can keep sitting and waiting. We push. Uh, a typical way for for someone to stop. Right, a pawn with a knight is to kind of oops have this maneuvering. Um, I'm not even sure how to call this. It's like a square that is formed, so the knight just kind of um, just moves around in circle based on how you attack it. But the point is, if white manages to win black's knight, then obviously they will win on the other side of the board. Right. So if we go here and he goes knight f3, right. Uh, we are going to go king f4, for example, right, attacking the knight. And if you go knight here, we are attacking the knight. You move it away, and then we push h4 because this is not a situation where black can sacrifice the knight for the pawn. And that's usually, you know, that's basically the pattern that will happen throughout. All right. Now going back to this position, if instead of uh, king b6, black would try knight here in order to stop the pawn from pushing forward. King f6, you can still do the same thing, but uh, now knight e6, you will take the pawn, right? It makes total sense because now there's no way since white brought the king here. Uh, but now what we notice is the king and the knight together will kind of dominate black's knight. So we play king f5 and um, you bring in the king, right? King b5, because you're trying to kind of, you know, bring the king knight f4 offering the knight a trade you can check if you want to and now a very important move of domination you have to figure out where this knight may go but you also have to keep black king from entering in front of the pawn right so king e6 is the correct move here you have to trust me on that and then the knight restricts the square on which you know black's knight could stop the h pawn and then we slowly march so pretend you go here king c4 king c5 we slowly march the h pawn and there will be no simple way for black to stop that pawn. Say you play a move like this, king f5, check. What do we play now? Does anyone have any ideas? Actually, I, I might have gone wrong. Wait a second. Actually, I think I can. I don't need king f5. I think I can just play h5. I made a mistake. I don't need king f5. I can just push h5. Yeah. What am I saying? Uh, followed by, you know, king f5, the next move. And um, black's king is way too far from the pawn. Yeah, in that position also it was possible after knight g4, uh, knight g4, king f5. Here, king e5, but then he can come right back. So you haven't even you haven't actually progressed the position. That's why h5 is good. Whenever you can push the pawn, you push it forward, and then you bring in the king to chase the knight away. So this is basically what's happening after knight f4. In case of knight d4, with a similar idea, but you're also you know keeping the knight close enough that you can. I, I guess give some checks. Not not so important. Knight f3, h3. <laughs> And now king b6. We have a similar, uh, you know, pattern with white. We are going to restrict or dominate black's knight. We're keeping those squares away from it. 
you have to take another king marches here and a beautiful move in this position i wonder if any of you can find it so gorgeous because um after this move black will not have a way to stop the h pawn anymore this is i believe a very nice move for white that helps white win the game so the correct move is knight to d4 simply hanging the knight but the point is that after knight takes and h4 black does not have any single way of stopping that pawn because this king in f6 is perfectly placed and it takes you quite some moves to give a check so say you go knight e2 we push h5 you attack the pawn we push h6 you give one check and now the correct move i mean i guess there are more moves but you kind of go in a diagonal from the knight that way it takes um three moves for the knight to give a check during which time white will be able to pr to to promote the pawn so very beautiful i think move knight to d4 this kind of shows clear domination where um you know you're just sacrificing the knight they take but the king simply restricts black's knight and there's nothing nothing to do some of you have gotten the move right good job on that all right moving on to the next position i think this is this was i hope you guys like this this kind of pattern like uh in knight end games usually you see domination knight versus bishop that is a typical type of idea that you see that is something that i've shown as i said in my twitch stream uh, a few days back but um but this is knight domination and king dominating a knight which you see more rarely in my opinion you also see a pawn dominating the knight typically when there is uh, like in the open in a lot of openings you would see that when there's a knight being developed in c6 for example and someone plays c3 to restrict the knight from going forward but here uh, i find that to be uh, quite nice now this position is also by the same author and okay someone had a question about the previous one so i feel like i should go back and discuss it um, so in this position, if you were going to go knight g5, the reason this move would not be so good is because black would get his knight on a good path. So he would go knight h4 and now it's not easy for you to chase it away from the pawn because now I, I can go knight g2 and, and the knight is going to be able to stop the pawn. And so for example, you, you cannot sacrifice it anymore because obviously they take and they stop the h pawn. So when you go to the side, he brings in the king and if you attack, He's going to go knight g2. And you don't really have a simple way to trade this knight. And even if you manage to, during that time, black is going to be able to bring in the king closer uh, to being in front of the h-pawn. And then um, the king and pawn endgame will be a draw because that is an h-pawn, which I hope all of you are familiar with. And that's supposed to be a draw. So that's why knight g5 would not work, but knight d4 was the correct move keeping this knight at a distance from the h pawn and there's no way for black to stop it anymore so the next position is basically very similar to the first one just that the position of white's knight is now in b8 instead of a8 which makes it kind of obvious that white is going to lose the a pawn considering that now the knight is attacked and you have to move it you don't have any way to protect that knight no way so i wonder if any of you have an idea on how you can try to win this position with white what would be the plan uh i i think i've already i've already described that fit so i really hope it was clear enough what i have mentioned yeah the h pawn cannot push because the knight will be sacrificed for it so you wouldn't have the opportunity to do anything because the king would make it in front oh wait maybe you have a point if knight h4 in this case you're saying well then there's this domination of course king to g5 the knight cannot go forward. This knight stops him from going there. You have to go knight c2. Uh, sorry, knight g2. And now the knight dominates this knight once again. Thanks for pointing that out. I think this will make it kind of clear 
how the king restricts the knight. And now black's knight is trapped, okay? Uh, and then these are white's next two moves, and uh, it will be game over. So, uh, yeah, knight d4 is the correct move. And that's where you kind of had to take, and you couldn't go to h4. Okay, so I made that clear. That's good to to hear. Uh, we have this position now, and it is white to move. So what do we think about this position? Well, we're kind of forced to make the first move, I think. Um, we have knight c6 or knight d7. One of them, you know, is good. The other one, not so. I guess you could attack the knight too, but there would be knight g5 check. After which the knight should be able to stop the h pawn. So knight c6 is the correct move indeed in this position. Uh, and, uh, and black is going to take the pawn, obviously, and now h4. And um, as I said, this kind of ideas do not quite work because after king g5, if you keep attacking the knight, this is not the same as the previous position. It takes white way too many moves to try to uh, dominate this knight. It's not really going to work. The knight can jump around so much. So for example, if you play here, they will play king b6, for example. And if you try to bring in the knight similarly as before, right, to try to control those squares and the king would come this way, for example, the king comes to c7, you do this, and now knight f2. If you want to play one more move and try to keep the knight restricted, his king comes in, uh, and then when you attack the knight, he's going to go knight g1. And if you go h4, for example, the king just gets in, as I mentioned, and black should be able to hold this position. That's why it is very, very important that you push the pawn immediately. Now the king will try to come, for example, king b5. And now we are chasing the knight because you see with the pawn we have restricted that strong square for black's knight. And after knight f4, for example, we have this check. And now a similar idea as the previous position. I wonder if any of you can find it. Similar idea where you're deflecting somehow Black's Knight from the control of the H pawn and not not letting it uh, promote. What do you guys think? So the correct move in this position is knight to e2. Yes, Eric, knight to e2. Uh, knight here would not quite work because of knight h5. And then the point is that um, if you go king g6, there's knight g3. And you don't quite have a way to get this knight away from g3 uh, to push the pawn. And you cannot push it right now. And therefore, for example, if you do this, you will bring in the king. And this does not work now anymore because the knight will take it. And if you play h5, knight here, draw. So now we play knight to e2. The point is that after capture, because you cannot never go knight h5, right? The, the knight will get trapped. You have nowhere to go now. And you have to try to stop the h pawn. So this is your only way. But now h5, the knight can try to come in and knight e4, threatening knight g5. But then once again, the same idea as we've seen previously. I, I felt like, although these positions are so similar and they're from the same author, obviously, I felt that it's important to show both because once you get the idea, it's nice to kind of review it in a way in another position. And I feel that this kind of reviews it very clearly. The king being placed uh, on a diagonal with one square in between uh, itself and the opponent's knight keeps the knight at a distance from stopping the pass pawn and white is winning. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. We're currently going over some interesting studies um, and trying to break down some of the domination ideas. At least in the past two studies, I did do that, I hope. Um, and now, even if you bring in the king h7, obviously, and you don't have, uh, you know, check, uh, check pawn or check queen later, nothing, you have nothing. All right. 
moving on to another position and you know it is very hard to talk about studies and not bring in some king and pawn end game king and pawn end games are type of end games that i like to teach the most because i feel that they're the types of end games that uh, teach you most of the time how to calculate they teach you how to think about the opponent how to um to just simply calculate without moving the pieces and kind of visualize the board a little bit better and um you always have to start you know basic with a little amount of material in my opinion and then add more because if you just start with everything in the beginning it just seems to be tough and overwhelm uh, overwhelming obviously or not obviously but i believe many of you who are here are probably at the more advanced level so um you know you don't need me to remind you of that but those are important things that uh, you have to keep in mind and if you're struggling with calculation uh, i highly recommend um you know solving uh, studies and especially starting with uh, king and pawn end games you can also try uh, to solve them blindfolded uh, that helps you even more with uh, pattern recognition and um, and how to say um, visualization of the board so in this king and pawn end game obviously white has a pawn down and normally if you would evaluate it um, you would think that white has no chance white may even be losing this because the a pawn of black or the a pawns of black are far away so by the time white goes to get them black should be doing great wrong if you thought that way definitely wrong that's now how things uh are going thank you so much guys that's not how things are going it's not really that easy uh and simple white also has a passed pawn the c pawn is passed as well so you don't need to only think about the a pawn you should think about yours as well and you should think that you want to promote it as, as well um you have to just find the right way to to push the pawn to make sure the opponent does not have any counterplay obviously you cannot go for the a pawn because you cannot go king b5 or king b6 and going king c5 does not make sense at all he's going to simply bring in his king and by the time you reach to take those pawns this will be basically the end of it it will probably be a draw so you go here they take and you guys are about in the same time to grab the opponent's pawn so if i just play it out for example here 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 king g2 takes takes and now king g6 or king h6 black takes this pawn white takes this one and it is a draw so i think this this is pretty straightforward and an idea that you realize it cannot work you didn't need to play it out throughout like i did uh, to understand that it's not working so great but what to do? So we have two things that we can do with white that make sense. One of them is to move the king away from in front of the pawn and then start pushing the c pawn. The other one is start pushing the c pawn and then figuring out what it is that they will do. And you also have to figure out where you place your king. Now, usually when you're studying simple basic king and pawn end games, king pawn versus king, you're learning that it is very important for the king to be in front of the pawn to support its last three pushes the last three pushes to promotion and so ideally you want to place your king either in b7 or d7 don't you even think of going anywhere else okay so someone is saying that push c4 of course that's one move that we have to consider and then there's king b7 or king b7 those are the moves that make sense if we go king b7 this is the line that will happen c5 a3 c6 a2 c7 queen queen and the point is that with white what is your chance here he's going to move the king somewhere and the best thing that you will do is maybe some perpetual check you will not have the opportunity to win even if you somehow manage to take this pawn and then trade queens let's just pretend then you have to take this a pawn and by the time your king comes back you may even be losing if he manages to take your two two pawns so you don't have much so definitely i think it makes sense to you that white should place their king on d7 not on b7 
because on d7 it actually restricts black's king too and together with the queen they can create some kind of tactical ideas of mating ideas maybe so now the question is do you play c4 or do you go king to d7 i see many of you are thinking d7 but there were some who are saying c4 and it's always tricky and you have to understand if there is a difference and actually there is a big difference if you push c4 it's going to be a mistake because black has sufficient time to bring in their king to kind of stop your pawn so let's just pretend here here and now uh, you're gonna go king b7 to try to support that pawn and so this is basically the best thing that can happen so even if you promote first now the king is still far away cannot support any kind of idea for you know mate or anything like that so the game will most likely end in a draw if you're thinking about Um, sorry, here, 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 instead of, uh, instead of king b7, if you're thinking, oh, but I can come here and something. No, 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 please don't make this blunder. This would be a blunder. Why? Because the king comes in, and when you take, we are dealing with the same situation, just that in this case, probably black is winning, because their king is a little bit better placed, and he can try some g5. Let's just say go here. Oops, sorry. Um, here, you bring in the king, here, you bring in the king, and now g4. The point is that we managed to take this pawn, it's not like you can, you cannot take because king takes g3, and if you go king h4, simp a simple waiting move uh, wins the game. You move the king, we take the pawn, and then the g-pawn wins the game. So the correct move in that position is king to d7. He's going to start pushing the pawn because his king cannot stop the c-pawn anymore. And obviously we are dealing with this line. Both players have promoted to a queen, but now... There's a mate, because our king actually supports the queen. So after king f7, and h4, checkmate. So as you can see, placing the king on the right square could even lead to mate, even in, a, in an endgame. So I thought this was kind of nice in a way, because it reminded you that move order matters. The way you are pushing or moving the king or pushing a pawn can be important so you have to take your time and calculate everything and also make sure you're considering the opponent because the opponent is very very important and you wouldn't want them to have some um you know tricky uh tricky kind of uh, ways my next position is the following and it's a study by polasek and uh, I think this is really, really awesome. I really think this end game is this end game study is really awesome because the position is so blockaded and and white has an extra knight. But you need to come up with a lot of maneuvering ideas in order to be able to win. If there were more pieces on the board and it would be some kind of Capablanca style position, you probably would think of domination on the A file somehow. Or, or activity, you would get active on the A file, and then somehow you'd be able to do something. Though usually there's still a way in Capablanca's games and end games, there's still a way on the other side of the board that they can um, like open up the position and, and do something. But in this case, uh, there's there's none. There's just one side and there's just one knight. So it is very important to come up with with an idea on how white can win this position. Ideally, you would be thinking that the knight will have to be sacrificed at some point for a pawn, but then you realize on whichever pawn you sacrifice the knight, he's going to capture back, and then you won't be able to win with that plus pawn that you're creating because their king is close enough, is in the box. Whereas your king is not really able to support that plus pawn because you have no entrance. So this is really, really nice. Um, a really a really really nice position so you have to come up with a plan in order to be able to know what you're gonna do so someone is saying 
you're bringing the knight to a4, okay? And after that, what do you do? I will keep my king in c6 to keep my c5 pawn protected. King in g2 and knight to a4. Yeah, that's that's a great idea, but what do you do when my king will, will stay and keep the pawn protected? You have to figure out which pawn you want to win. The knight needs to make a big trip around the board and get to h4. Oh, that's a nice idea too. Mm -hmm. Once the knight gets there, if they take it, your king will come right back, or it depends where it is. You will take that knight, and then we'll have, uh, you will have g5 pawn push, takes, and then the king and pawn endgame will be winning indeed. Knight to h4. How do we get the knight to h4? That's the idea. So there's step. This is a step-by-step endgame. This is a step-by-step uh, endgame. Yeah, step end so I think there are a few steps that you have to... I don't think. I know. <laughs> there are a few steps you have to uh, get ready in order to be able to get those... Um, to get that going. And even after that, what do you do after that? So let's see. So obviously first move is king g2. So you're moving the king away in order to free that square. And then you need to bring the knight, right, to h3. And then you're coming right back to bring it to a4. That's what you guys said, right? Because you cannot bring it to h4 directly. There's no way to get the knight there considering the way white pawns together with black pawns are located. You don't have a way to get it to h4. If you could, that would be great. Okay, so you need to bring the the jeep, the king over to the queen side. What are you going to do if you bring the king over to the queen side? It's not like you'll be able to um, to win anything because, as I said, even if you sacrifice the knight for one pawn, they will recapture and then their king will be able to stop your passed pawn and your own king will not have the way to enter. The only way you can enter is if you place your knight in h4 and they take. That way for sure, I will see how. So anyways, black just sits and waits, then knight c1, he sits and waits, knight d2, sits and waits, knight g1, knight h3. So we did this so far. He continues to sit and wait because what to do? Um, he's not... Wait. Wait, why is he sitting there? I think the my move is, is wrong. My move is wrong. He cannot sit there. If he sits, he sits in, in e6. I'm so sorry. Why did I put it there? I don't know. He sits in e6. If he sits in c6, obviously we take, and then if they capture back, then we start the pawn march and we're winning. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm so sorry. I put the wrong move. So he doesn't go to c6, he sits around here. He sits on yeah, e6, right? just to make it very clear. And then um, uh, knight of 2 and then back king to d6, right? So it's pretty, it's pretty simple to understand that you cannot take that pawn. All right. Now we continue knight d1, king c6. Knight b2, king d6. He just sits, right? He sits close by to those pawns because that he realizes is what you want to attack. So knight a4, king c6. All right, so we brought the knight to that point. Now what to do? How do we bring it to h4 as you guys want? Get the knight to b6. If you go with the knight to b6, I will capture it. So obviously that doesn't quite work. But uh, but you can't get it to b6 if you're making a waiting move, right? If you're making a move the king, exactly. If it's saying it right, other people are saying it right too. You just move the king somewhere, wherever you want. And then he has to move his king somewhere to keep the pawn protected, indeed. And now you can get the knight to b6. Okay, that makes total sense. All good. Now he's just going to sit and wait. And he will try not to allow your knight to jump wherever it is that you want to jump. Okay. Now what do we do next? The knight is in b6. How do we bring the knight further? That is the important idea. That is something you want to get. So, you have to bring the knight through c7. So, he's going here. 
Mm -hmm. King e6. And now knight c7 check. King d7. Not to let the knight jump around somewhere else. Now the knight comes back to b5. No, you you cannot because um you know with the knight in d5 you cannot really sacrifice in f4 or something here, for example, after king e6. If you sacrifice, he will just take with the e pawn. That way you're having no entrances with your own king. He just sits around that pawn and there's no way to win. So clearly he needs to bring the knight to b5. King c6, what is our next stage of the plan? This this is like I would say this is like a stage stage by stage type of position that you have to, to understand and keep in mind. We bring the king to b2, someone is saying. Okay, what's the point? In order to be able to play knight a3, yes, because the knight is stuck right now in b5. You don't really have an easy way to get it out of there. So you need to bring in the king so when you play knight a3, in case they capture it, you can uh, recapture with the, oops, with the king and then the king can enter and then also b4 and uh, transpose to a winning the king opponent game, basically. So... King e2. King d2. Now there was some small triangulation, it really doesn't matter so much. This is how the author gives the solution. But it's still like pretty pretty nice, I think. King c6. Knight c2. So now we're bringing the knight, as you guys said, to h4. Now he's rushing very fast on the other side of the board because he does not want the knight to be there. He wants to be able to take it. But white still plays this, and despite the fact that black has managed to bring the king to f6 and have it close enough in case of some knight sacrifice to have the king close enough to actually, you know, attack those pawns, now we finally go knight to h4. The point is if they take, we bring in the king as I told you previously. Oops. The king makes it in that direction, and at some point black will be in Zugzwang, white will be able to win the pawn, and therefore after that the game. For example, if you just sit and wait, right? Pretty simple. And then we take the pawn, like just take the pawn, you move somewhere, then we push g5, and if you take, obviously the king wins the game. If you don't take and you pretend like you sit, there's still a capture there, King g4, and then the king, oops, see, what did I do? Oof. I'm not sure what I did, I apologize. What have I done? All right. The king will take and then win those pawns. And if the king just sits there, put here, here, here and the king marches to take those pawns. Some people are saying to play knight f7. Let's see. Let's see what we do now. So he cannot take. I think we made it kind of clear that he cannot take. And the other one, like sitting with the king, doesn't work. Oh, pushing the pawn. I think this is something I didn't show. For example, and trying to enter with the king is not going to be sufficient once again because you cannot really enter here. That's the point. Because you have to go back. And then once we take it, you go back. And then basically the same thing. You cannot find any way, no way with black to stop. Then, yes, it is less than 50 moves. We are move 29. So we, have, we still have chances to win. And also we traded material. So it's not really like it doesn't matter. There is 50 moves. There's no 50 move rule. But yeah, in some situations, you know, I actually had a game once, I remember, against a low rated player. And um, the, the bad thing about it is that, you know, I finally was able to get into a position where I was winning, but I reached 50 moves and he claimed a draw. I mean, after I played for like two hours trying to get into the position that I felt I had some chances, he finally messed up, but then it was too late for me to actually do something. So the king just sits and waits, and now we do knight f5, I believe someone said that, king h7, and now if you realize, black's king is stuck, and it, he doesn't have pawn pushes, his king is stuck to protect h6, so if we make any kind of waiting move, like this one, he has to go back, we take the pawn, after which it's a much simple process, because, like, let's just be like here. You just bring in the knight, you try to take some of the other pawns. Now you have this pass pawn, so 
black skin has to stay in the box of it to stop it, and then white is going to be able to win. So this was that study. It's kind of crazy, I think, that from here, you can imagine you have a winning chance. Yes, you have it. You just need to make sure you take your chances when they're given to you because you don't know what life has, in, has planned for you. You never know. All right. Moving on to the next position. And this is kind of a nice one as well. I hope you guys liked my, my night maneuvering thing. And this position it is white to move. I'm curious how do you guys evaluate this position if you think white can win? And obviously you're going to tell me yes. How often did it happen to a master level and did they execute it correctly? Uh, it's more rare that you get such a blockaded position and you have to just maneuver it around um, to get to win like that, exactly as that position was. It's, it's more rare, but it does happen at times and usually people execute it correctly. Especially like at the like grandmasters, they usually, this is the way they end up winning, you know, by moving the pieces around a lot. At some point their opponent makes a mistake and then uh, in these types of positions a lot of top, I mean, not just top, but, but grandmasters usually have a very good sense of what they need to do in a position and I know that they can, they usually find a way to win. So this in your calculation is a draw. So in this position white has some nice ideas um, considering the black king is really kind of restricted here. It's really restricted here and it kind of stays on a mate. That is something very important for white to take note of uh, because they, if they don't take a note of this, they cannot win because those pawns are about to be traded. So white will not uh, be able to get an additional queen or whatever piece in order to try to win. And if that pawn is gone, you may think that's it, done, it's a draw. But no, really, it's not really like that. The first move in this position is bishop to g3. King h1. Black would have played king g1 too, but then there's this check. And then we take. That's the point. And now the bishop protects, and then with knight and bishop, white is able to win. They will first win the d-pawn, and then knight and bishop, I hope everyone is familiar on how to win that. I shouldn't go over. So he had to go king to h1 to avoid the check and allowing white to win that pawn. And now knight to e2. So basically, if you try something like this, then he's going to escape. So you don't need to tell someone. It's kind of like in real life, you know? If you tell someone you like them and they don't like you, <laughs> Uh, then you messed up your chance. Maybe you can wait. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, but anyways, here you can wait a little bit longer. And let's see what's happening. So the king stays on mate. Now it's completely restricted. But you're giving black the opportunity to take your pawn. If they don't take the pawn, this idea will be kind of simple. You play king h3, bishop f2, knight g3 mate. So that is basically what you're trying to do with white. Okay. So knight e2. Someone said knight h3. Knight h3 can work too, but usually you don't want to do this. Uh, you have to, if you guys are familiar with the mate, knight, and bishop versus king, then you would know how the knight kind of follows the w, right? It usually goes from second to fourth rank doesn't really get from first to third or fourth to third or something like that. It usually goes like that to make like an M or a W. When you do this, the problem is that you blockade your king. You're blocking the king and the king has to go to h3. If the king cannot go there, you don't have a mate. He's going to take your pawn and you don't have a, a mate. So that's basically what, what is happening in this, uh, in this situation. That's why knight e2 is very important because you're keeping that option open. Then the king goes to... Uh, sorry, the bishop goes to f2, knight to g3. So he's going to take king h3, and now obviously you cannot just sit like that because we have a very simple threat. 
so bishop h2 in case uh, in this position black is considering say bishop c7 you're going to get made it even easier by playing like that bishop h2 followed by knight g3 and there's nothing that you can do bishop a7 to stop that restriction and now bishop h2 white is definitely trying to mate with knight g3 taking the pawn would not make sense so bishop h2 bishop f2 to keep the mate under control but now black is running out of moves or black will be running out of moves here after bishop takes d6 um, you need to sit and wait basically and because uh, if you go here for example there's bishop c5 we've located that pass pawn now the king um, keeps white king keeps black skin restricted if you move the bishop now there's knight g3 mate if you don't move the bishop you'll lose it you don't have a way to keep this d takes c7 someone is saying d takes c7 after here after king h1 d takes c7 no that's not so strong because he takes and then he's going to trade his bishop for one of your minor pieces and if he does that then it's a big problem because you won't be able to win <laughs> piece or uh, whatever piece versus d pawn you won't be able to win unless you get lucky that your pawn doesn't know how to play and will promote something weird and will put themselves in a corner i mean will 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 so many ideas have to happen from the other side for you to have a chance so now and now bishop h2 so we're starting knight g3 we're back to the line bishop c2 and this is the final moment where you have to take your time it's kind of like the previous one where you had to step by step think about how that knight was going to jump around and get to the place that you wanted in this case it's similar too so um but but we still get to win some material so so bishop takes d6 you need to sit and wait with the bishop so pretend you go super far away so i don't have a way to to keep restricted and bishop h2 threatening mate once again so i did take a pawn in the process the bishop goes back and now it's a very nice uh, and cute move nice and cute and that move is bishop to g1 the point is that you're chasing the bishop away but you're also threatening knight g3 and if black moves, if obviously if black takes us knight g3 mate, but if black goes bishop e1, for example, now we move the bishop away, and it, it, this one is stuck. It has no moves. The king is stuck, so black has to move this pawn, and they will not play d6 to give it up. They'll play d5. And now you go bishop d4. You have blockaded that pawn, and now you're giving black the move, and he has no good move. The bishop has to move. Knight g3 checkmate the, the king cannot move so it's kind of done deal in case of bishop c5 for example in this position and then black was playing not d5 but d6 you're not worried about it you don't need to take the pawn you can just go back you want to keep it a little bit longer to make sure he doesn't get to stalemate himself you have to see here here however and now he doesn't have a good location to sacrifice his bishop for it not to be uh, a loss. He does not have a stalemate here, so it's kind of game over. So I'm saying king g1 instead of knight h3 check. I'm not even sure when you're king g1. Knight h3 check. I think you typed it wrong. There's no, there's no check, Omar. Oh, D takes C7. I thought I did say that, that no. D takes C7, Bishop takes C7. You don't have a check. So you don't have a check. And the way the things went, you never let black move the king from H1. It was always an H1. And that's why maybe you're talking about this other line that king g1 knight h3 check so here maybe you wanted to take so i guess that wins too here and if he takes you go knight uh, knight h3 check and take the bishop maybe here is what you meant here is a possibility too it's winning good day. and the last position that i have for you guys for today is the following one and it is why to move 
I wonder what do you guys think about this position and it is way to move. Material is equal, but white seems to have a slightly safer king and that pawn in c7 could be a huge help for white. So in this position, black is threatening to take the pawn in, in c7. We have opposite color bishops, which can be helpful uh, for the attack, but it can also be a problem. Is there not... We can try to find... Wait, bishop and knight in game? Whatever check you give, uh, black can try to take your pawn in c7. Queen f7 is an option if you want to trade and going into a queen, uh, bishop endgame, but this will not work because after takes, takes, they take the pawn, and now you think you, he has no way to stop the h pawn with the bishop, but he actually does. Here, 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 here. And the bishop stops the h pawn, and there's nothing you can do about it. So on king b6, king b6 is a nice idea, but you're not really stopping much, it check you. I can at least have a perpetual check, or if not, I think I can take the pawn next. It depends what you do, but I certainly have at least a perpetual check. Any other ideas? And this is beautiful, because it's kind of like domination in a way. Mm, not really domination, but more like... It shows you that material does not matter. It doesn't matter how much material you give up. It matters how much you have on the board and if it's a good enough one that you actually have serious threats. Because if that is the case, you can sacrifice something and then with the extra material that you have, you should be able to win. No, king h8, queen h8, mm -mm. queen h8, I just take the pawn. Queen e2. I think I still take the pawn. Maybe I take it with the queen so that I can take it with check. In the other case, I took it with the king because I was in check. Queen to f7. Queen to f7. Um, queen takes f7. Bishop takes f7 takes. And now, right, I did show that line. So I'm not sure. Maybe you join it later. But yeah. So the correct move and beautiful move in this position for white is... And I kind of made it on purpose to finish with this position because it is a queen sacrifice. It is queen to e8. This is an amazing, gorgeousness, gorgeousness, I don't know. Anything you want to say, move, I think. Because it's a check queen, you don't have a place to move the king to keep the queen protected, so you have to take. And the crazy thing is that in this position, despite having a queen down, white is winning after king b6. After king b6, we're threatening bishop here, check. King d7, bishop c6, winning the queen, and then we're promoted win. And crazy enough, um, black does not have the right kind of checks to uh, to stop the situation. So the best thing that they can do is probably queen b5. If you guys find any other moves, please do let me know. But uh, I, I looked a little bit more, and I didn't quite see any way for black to stop the bishop b7 in promotion. That was the first move that you considered, but you didn't find a win. That's okay. Queen f5. Queen? Mm -mm. No, no, no. Here. And the point is now the king cannot do anything, cannot be moved because bishop c6, and then we're threatening that. So the best move for black is to probably give up the queen back, right back. Imagine that. You have to give the queen back. Now you take this pawn and you're thinking, aha, uh -huh, this is it. I saved it. Everything is fine, but no, you did not save it because now we're pushing h5. Um, so you have to calculate, of course, in this position. You may be tempted to play bishop e4, thinking, aha, now I'm blockading those pawns. He won't be able to give me, uh, to sacrifice any to open the bishop. And, and why will just march with the h pawn? But it's not really like that because black can stop that pawn with the king as well. But then also there's f5 and e4. 
and then d3. So basically black can sacrifice all of those pawns and this is going to be a draw because the bishop will be able to restrict both the d and the h1 from the diagonal. He actually will be able to sacrifice the bishop for the d-pawn and then his king will make it in the corner and it will be a draw. So that's something very, very important. Bishop c3? No, no bishop c3 because anyways they, they can take the pawn. So it's not like you can go from loss to, <laughs> to win with black. Not really like that. So h5, and the point is there's nobody in the box of the pawn, and this bishop is stuck in a1. It cannot do anything. Oops. It cannot do anything. So d3, bishop e4, f5. And now you don't need to you don't need to panic. You can just pretend like you didn't see that your bishop was attacked, and when they take it, you go h7, followed by queen, and there's nothing the black can do. They're really behind with their own promotion. And once white won uh, and, well, was able to promote, white will be able to win this game. How did you guys feel about these endgame studies? Did you guys like them? I hope you did. This is all I have for today. Uh, I hope you had quite a lot. Bishop c3. Bishop c3 earlier. Yes, I did mention that. There was no possibility to do that. Instead of this, to play bishop c3, he's not going to do anything. He'll play h6. I'm glad you guys like them. A bishop c3 for black kind of never works. Everything was forced and uh, there was no way. So we can take it from the beginning again. So there was check queen you had to take and then king b6. Uh, we're threatening that bishop c3 here would not work because actually I'm not even sure if that check. But I could also take. And then when you take back, we can give check here and bishop c6 check. Win the queen followed by promotion. If you go back, Thinking, ooh, I promote. Well, let's not forget your king stays on mate, so all I have to do is bishop g6 or bishop f5. Bishop g6 is probably the best and fastest because I'm also attacking your pawn. So if you promote, I checkmate you. You have no no more choice, nothing to do to stop that. And then here, after king takes b5, king takes c7. I guess you could try bishop c6 now, but. You would always fall for this kind of mating ideas because white is definitely very serious um, trying to win. So that didn't work. And then um, there was no other point, I think. Maybe this was the final point where black would have tried bishop c3. But as I said, you're a little bit too behind. I push h3 and this pawn wins. Favorite study books. Uh, lots of Kasparian ones are very good. Um... Kasparian are definitely some of the best ones. And pretty much any place you can find studies is, is amazing. You have to try to solve as many as you can to help yourself. All right, guys, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining in um, my, you know, YouTube video with studies. And I hope there were some interesting domination studies um it was great to see all of you here i hope to see you back be sure to follow uh and, and subscribe to uh san luis chess club's youtube channel if you haven't done so yet you will get notified when we go live there, there's tons of uh important and and nice videos uh very instructive ones uh, taught by many top strong grandmasters and lower rated players as well but the the material shared I think is very important and uh, I really hope you guys do subscribe uh, other than that thank you so much and I'll see you very soon either here or on Twitch bye bye for now